hi friends this is lecture number 18 of power system series here in this lecture we are going to study equivalent circuit and inductance first we start with equivalent circuit so network having same parameters as actual electrical network then it is called a equivalent network or equivalent circuit to understand it more clearly suppose there is a transmission line and if 200 megawatt load is injected then current get increased by 300 ampere in that line suppose we create a circuit diagram of that transmission line and check that circuit by applying same 200 megawatt if we get same 300 ampere in the circuit it means that circuit is equivalent circuit of transmission line i hope you are getting my point so here on solving this equivalent circuit we get the same results as in case of practical transmission line so that's why it is a equivalent circuit now in equivalent circuit we denote some parameters if we talk about transmission line then in transmission line also we denote certain parameters in its equivalent circuit and these parameters are like resistance, inductances and capacitances like interline capacitances, capacitance to ground and leakage conductances all these parameters are represented on transmission line. But here in this lecture we will focus only on inductance. Now the question arises why there is inductance in transmission line. See, when current flows through a transmission line, then magnetic field is produced. We all know that. And we know that magnetic field is exhibited by an inductor. So, whenever magnetic field is produced, then it is shown by means of a inductor, of an inductor. So, if field links with some other line, then mutual inductance comes in picture in this way inductance we can say inductance is present in transmission line so actually there are two main inductances in transmission line one is induct internal inductance and another is external inductance this external inductance or mutual inductance is due to mutual flux and this internal inductance or self inductance is due to internal flux so in this video we will cover internal inductance only our main focus will be on internal inductance so let's start the internal inductance so internal inductance is due to flux linkage inside the conductor i already told you so here to understand the concept of internal inductance we have to make some assumptions so, so here we will make two assumptions first is we will not consider the skin effect and second assumption is we will assume that current is uniformly distributed all over the cross section of conductor so suppose there is a conductor which is carrying current i and it is having radius small r so current density j can be given by current upon area okay current density is equals to current by area and if the radius of conductor is r then area of that conductor is pi r square so we can easily write current density is equals to current upon area that is i by pi r square now i is the current in conductor r is the radius of conductor now to find the inductance we need to find the flux linkage because inductance is equals to flux, flux linkage upon current and here current is already known that is i to find the flux linkage we need to find the magnetic field and magnetic field can be found by using ampere's law that is Ampereian loop so to apply the ampere's law we have to assume a Ampereian loop suppose the Ampereian loop has radius y and this radius y is less than the radius of conductor r here we are assuming this ampere loop 
inside the conductor because we have to find the internal flux see this cross section of conductor suppose it is carrying current i which is coming out of your computer or mobile screen whatever you are using so this current i is coming out of your mobile or computer screen this current will produce a magnetic field and to find the direction of magnetic field we point the thumb of our right hand towards the current so here in this case current is coming out of your screen so to find the direction of field what we do we will point the thumb you have to point your thumb towards your chest okay because you have visualizing the current coming out of your, out of your screen now curl your fingers so when you curl your fingers then direction of your fingers uh, direction in which your fingers are curling it will give the direction of magnetic field so direction in which your fingers curl will be the direction of magnetic field so by right hand thumb rule the direction of magnetic field will be anti clockwise you can see here this direction of field is anti clockwise see you have to carefully listen all these things and you have to clearly understand this concept otherwise you will not be able to get my point okay so the here the direction of magnetic field is anti clockwise now see the current is uniformly distributed over the entire surface current is uniform over the entire surface if total area is pi r square and it encloses the current i then current enclosed by this amperian loop will be how will we find it see that pi r square is enclosing the current i then how much current this pi y square will impose uh, enclose so this this can be easily calculated by unitary method so here suppose pi pi r square is enclosing current i then pi y square will enclose current that is equals to pi y square by pi r square into i okay or it can simply written as current density into pi y square so current enclosed by imperial loop will be equals to i into y square by r square now what ampere law says that current enclosed in a path is equals to closed integral of h dot dl so here i enclosed is equals to i into y square by r square and that will be equals to closed integral of the uh, closed integral dot dl is 2 pi y okay because radius of ampere amperian loop is y so its its circumference means it is the length so circumference will be equals to 2 pi y so we can easily write i into y square by r square is equals to h into 2 pi y from this we get h is equals to i into y by 2 pi r square now here h is the magnetic field strength now magnetic field density that is denoted by b that is equals to mu h so here if we put the value of h then we get b is equals to mu y i by 2 pi r square see these b and h all these concepts are uh, are found in subject ele uh, electromagnetic field theory so here b is actually magnetic flux density and it is measure of actual magnetic field within the material so all these concepts are uh, studied uh, are generally found in electromagnetic theory but uh, if you don't remember these concept then you have to memorize them so uh, try to understand it or if you no, uh, not not getting the, all these uh, concepts then pl please try to memorize okay so here we know that d phi is equals to b dot ds flux is equals to b dot ds and we have already uh, find the value of b that is equals to mu y i by 2 pi r square now here we have to take this ds very carefully in this flux d phi is equals to b dot ds we will take the area that is perpendicular to this b or h 
means we have to choose this area ds very carefully that is it must be perpendicular to this magnetic field as i already told you that current is coming out of your screen so by right hand thumb rule magnetic field is anti clockwise now direction of b or h at any point on an empyrean loop that will be tangent to the empyrean loop see this length of conductor l then this dark blue surface is the area perpendicular to field b so this dark blue surface has length l you can see that this is length l and breadth is dy okay this breadth is dy i don't know whether you are able to visualize it or not to see these three uh, i to understand this see these three axes this is x y and this is z axis now suppose this conductor cross section lies in x y plane okay this cross section of conductor is lying in x y plane now this z axis which is going suppose it is going inside your computer screen now length of conductor is along this z axis now if field is along y axis this y axis suppose so if field is along y axis now this dark blue area which is perpendicular to field b where it will lie it will lie in x z plane so i think now you are getting my point now it is more clear to do you, uh, clear to you i hope it so so we get this area this dark blue area perpendicular to b so d5 is equals to b dot ds and b is equals to i we have already calculated it that is equals to mu y i by 2 pi r square and what is ds ds is equals to length into breadth that is area and this area is perpendicular to the field or magnetic field strength so this area is equals to what is length length is l and what was width width was dy so d phi is equals to mu y i by 2 pi r is pi r square into l into dy so now we are we get d phi now flux linkage is equals to d phi into number of turns but here in the conduct conductor there are no visible turns so for this conductor suppose there is a single turn in this conductor so you have to assume that conductor represent one turn because there are no visible turns in this conductor now now if conductor has one turns and these one turns are in area pi r square if pi r square has one turn then number of turns in empyrean loop will be equals to see the area of empyrean loop is pi y square so if number of turns in pi r square is one then number of turns in pi y square will be it is it can be found by using simple unitary method so it will be equals to pi y square by pi r square into number of turns that is equals to one so finally we get n is equals to y square by r square this is very simple unitary method so the number of turns enclosed by empyrean loop will be equals to y square by r square so putting the value of d5 from previous slide now number of turns n we get that is equals to y square by r square so flux linkage is equals to d5 into number of turns so we get y square by r square mu y l i by 2 pi r square into dy so this flux linkage is equals to on simplifying this we get mu l i by 2 pi r 4 multiplied with y cube dy now we we have to find the flux linkage because it is d d phi d psi to find the total flux linkage we have to integrate the both sides so on integrating the both both sides from 0 to r we get 
psi is equal to c this the integration of y cube is y4 y4 y to g power 4 by 4 so on putting values uh, on taking limits from 0 to r we get psi is equals to mu li by 8 pi or it is equals to mu naught li by 8 pi why here we take mu is equals to mu naught see aluminium is a paramagnetic material so we can take mu is equals to mu naught so internal inductance is given as at the start of this video I what I told you that internal inductance is equals to flux linkage upon current okay and flux linkage we have already calculate, calculated now we can easily find the internal inductance so internal inductance is equals to psi by i that is equals to mu naught l by 8 pi henry so if we divide this expression by length of conductor l then we will get inductance in henry per meter so divide this expression by length l we get mu naught upon 8 pi henry per meter so in, if we put the value of mu naught and 8 pi then we can further simplify this expression so we will get internal inductance is equals to 0 0.05 into 10 to the power minus 6 henry per meter or 0 0.05 milli henry per kilometer here one point is very important that internal inductance is independent of radius of conductor here you can see that it is constant so i hope you all understand this derivation in next lecture we will derive the expression of external inductance till then thank you jashyam